Hello everyone, I'm Noah. I'm the second negative speaker today. And I'm going to be going over my opponent's um, proposal for the travel ban by giving my workability and disadvantage claims. Now, for my workability claim, I want to say that the travel ban is never going to be actually executed. Now, for the first travel ban, we all know how that ended in disaster. It was a huge mess in the United States. Um, and that's because, and how the courts were fighting this constantly. And that's because um, federal, a, the, I'm sorry. That's because the courts have deemed the travel ban unconstitutional. Now, Adam Liptak for the New York Times stated, a federal judge's panel unanimously stated that the ban did not advance national security. No evidence that anyone from the Southern nations had committed terrorist, terrorist acts against the United States. Now, um, there was no evidence when Trump's administration proposed their first travel ban, so that's why it was rejected. And Adam Liptak for the New York Times again states that the three judge panel stated that it is beyond question the deci decision that the federal judiciary retains the authority to um, to challenge any constitutional executive actions. Now, when Trump's administration proposed their second travel ban, they again failed to provide any reasonable evidence. Um, Alan Gomez for USA Today stated that federal judges who blocked Trump's first executive order cited that the lack of national security justification throughout their opinions. Um, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, in particular, pressed government lawyers to provide any examples of terrorist acts committed by immigrants from the banned countries to justify the ban. Now, Trump's administration did provide evidence, but it was very weak. Um, okay, Alan Gomez states again that for the for USA Today states that the order provides. Um, the order provides few details about terrorist acts that refugees and immigrants from those countries carried out in the U.S. It mentions the arrest of a Yemeni man who was convicted in 2014 of planning a Christmas time bombing in Portland. But it also mentions the arrest of two Iraqi refugees convicted of terrorism-related offenses, even though Iraq is no longer included by the executive order. So um, Trump's administration is providing very weak evidence to the courts who need to go through it to actually put this into place. So that's um, a workability, that's my workability claim on why it's just not gonna pass. Now, um, a disadvantage of if the travel ban is implemented is it's gonna have economic consequences to, to the country. Now Trump's first travel ban cost business travel bookings about 185 million in just the two weeks that it was um, in place. The Global Business Travel Association, um, Millennialism Zena for the Hill states that the Global Business Travel Association states that the countries targeted, targeted, targeted in the temporary travel ban make up a small fraction of the incoming travel to the United States and don't crack the top 20 travel markets to the country. But the Global Business Travel Association said the uncertainty around the U.S. travel is having a rippling effect on traveler confidence into the United States. So what that means is not only is it these countries aren't really major, they don't come, tourists from those countries do not come to the United States, but people from neighbor countries do not want anything to do with the U.S. now. Um, she also states that according to a poll from the U.S. Travel Association, nearly half of European professionals expected, expected their company to reduce business travel over the next three months, while 31% of American respondents agreed. Of all U.S. business travel in 2016, 87.3% was domestic and 12.7% was international. Now, that's, our, that's having a huge effect on the U.S. tourism, US tourism as a whole. Um, Ariel Zibler um, for Mother Jones, the, the magazine Mother Jones states that U.S. tourism industry lost three billion in just two weeks after the travel ban, and tourists are now looking for el elsewhere to visit, such as Ontario, Canada. So my previous claim that 185 million was from 
just business travel. But as a whole, we lost about three billion in just two weeks from because of the travel ban. So you can imagine what would happen if this was actually in place. Um, finally, I want to say that um, putting such a act in place had also has international consequences. Um, many countries oppose what the United States was doing. For example, all of these are quotes from countries. Um, and, but um, all of these are quotes from countries that Anesri Azita for CNN um, stated. Trump's, immigra Trump's immigration order it, for, I'm sorry, for Iran, Trump's immigration order is insulting and a gift to extremists. The Foreign Affairs Ministry said, Iran will take reciprocal measures in order to safeguard the rights of its citizens until the time of the removal of the insulting restrictions of the government of the United States against Iranian nationals. So many, so that's just one example. Um, I have some more is Muslim-based countries, but I'm gonna skip to the European ones just to show that it's not just affecting Muslim countries. Um, Germany stated that the necessary and decisive fight against terrorism is no way in no way justifies a general suspicion against people of certain beliefs. In the case of the Muslim faith or from a certain or origin, Chancellor Angela Merkel said, these actions, according to my beliefs, are against the core idea of international aid for refugees and international cooperation. A spokesman of Merkel earlier said that the Chancellor had called Trump on Saturday to explain him the United States obligations under the Geneva Convention of Refugees. So as you can see, um, from everything from international consequences to economic consequences to the courts not even supporting this is a reason why the travel ban should not be in place. <laughs>